Hey guys, Enter the Stars. And a couple quick headlines that didn't make it into today's show, but are very, very important. It appears as though hundreds of Gaffman refugees have arrived at Dulles NVCC Amondale campus. And this is unbelievable. Now, why do I say this is unbelievable? Not because we shouldn't help refugees, but because, one, we are in the midst of a spam pandemic, according to the powers that be. We are in the midst of, according to the powers that be, a crisis of teeterism. Now, of course, the focus has shifted to those of us who live here and they want to call us teeterists. But now, with all these warnings that have already been given by the president, this just throws another thing in the mix. What's to stop someone from going undercover and pretending like they're a refugee and sneaking in the country? Now, if you think this is impossible and this could never happen, understand that there's precedent for this and it has happened many times before. In fact, one of the leaders who took over, one of the Balitan leaders that took over was already released from Guantanamo. Went on to then rejoin the ranks. So, this is uh, disturbing to me, to say the least, because, not because, not even probably because these there's someone within this group that could do something like this, but because it could be used later by other people who now have a scapegoat or a fall guy to blame any future teeterous acts on, right? There's a term that this is called when you basically allow in different possibilities into the narrative that then can be scapegoated later by people that want to fog and muddy the waters in terms of who to place the blame on when these things happen. So that's what I'm mostly concerned with. Now here it is. Uh, this lady reported on it, Jess Arnold. I went to this Twitter page. And of course, all of the replies are positive about her reporting on this. And any hint of disagreement about this, you're immediately called a xenophobe. Okay? And that's all by design. And then they go through and remove all of the comments that don't jive with the narrative so this is what's going on they even have the gaffman refugee assistance program if you want to give money to these people they of course they're going to show the children so i guess we're going to see what happens with all this how this plays out here are some of the images from it here is the post here, I looked down through some of these in red, but uh, this just throws fuel on the fire in terms of everything going on. I mean, we're in the midst of a huge uh, political debate in this country about whether or not someone even should be stickered. And there's a lot of emotions, a very high tension going on right now. And they're going to just dump this into the mix too? Why not take them to an outside base? Why America? Why not some another base in a different part of the world? We got bases everywhere. We got bases in Germany. Now, something else we were told was that both of the stickers were 94 and 95% effective, yet we're seeing cases breaking through at a way higher rate than that by people that got fully stickered. Here's the latest. J.J. Jesse Jackson and his wife Jacqueline both hospitalized and they were fully stickered. So what does this tell you? This tells you that oftentimes, now they'll call this the fog of science, right? Oh, things are developing as we get more data, then we're able to fine tune. But how many times do people have to be wrong in order for us to at least maintain our bodily autonomy and do what is best for us 
under our own opinion and not let people bully us into doing other things. Now, as we told you, this was never going away. This is Barron's. The CV threat is here to stay. What that means for the drug makers? Well, of course, that means an endless supply of supply and demand, right? Forced demand. We already know the mandates are happening, working side by side with the feds who are enabling these corporations. They're not standing in their way of mandating these things. And in fact, the federal government is also mandating it to their workers. At this moment, the molecules that form the genetic code of the virus that caused CV-19 are reshuffling themselves in the cells of millions of people around the world. Sounds like a bad movie, doesn't it? Since the variant set off a deadly wave of infections in India, the fight has been changing. 140,000 new cases per day. So, here's where things stand. This is just going to go on forever. When can people stand up and say, you know what, whatever happens, happens. We'll deal with it. And sometime, and people are going to die. Protect yourself, but don't expect other people to protect you. When are we going to get to that day? Here's a weird story. California family found dead hiking in an area, possibly from toxic algae poisoning. Now, if you live in or around Merced, the Merced River, this is still an ongoing investigation. But what they're saying is, is this family was hiking on this trail and they were all found dead. Now, it'd be interesting to look deeper into these people because maybe, maybe there's something else at play here. You never know. Like, were these people speaking out? Did this, was this guy a scientist? You gotta ask yourself these questions. I know it sounds kind of paranoid, but this just sounds weird, right? I mean, how many other people were swimming in the Merced River drainage that didn't get sick? So, you gotta ask yourself. Weird. Surprising key to making sure the stickers are safe. The blue blood of horseshoe crabs. Now, we had covered this years ago before cv19 about how these horseshoe crabs are used in testing some of these different drugs let's take a look market watch now there's more to this because this is on a spiritual level as well blue blood cra crabs are an unclean creature unclean animal according to the old testament why because they're shellfish they live in the ocean. They don't have scales. This is from the Old Testament. Let's read about this. It's one of the stranger, lesser known aspects of U.S. healthcare. The striking milky blue blood of horseshoe crabs is a critical component, component of tests to ensure injectable meds such as CV-19 stickers are not contaminated. Now understand that these horseshoe crabs are made out of a copper-based blood. It's called hemocyanin. And we looked at this copper-based blood. The molecule in the copper-based blood actually looks like the star of Remfan. It's very weird. Let's see if we can look it up real quick. Um, now, we covered this long long time ago here's hemocyanin look at this it is the star of remfan you can see it right here basically a triangle above and a triangle below with a hexagon in the middle so what is going on with this what is this about well this is spiritual and this is why they use this crap to test these things it says, to, to obtain it, harvesters bring many thousands of creatures to laboratories to be bled each year and then return them to the sea. The practice that has drawn criticism because some don't survive the process. And in fact, a lot don't survive the process, but they try to cover that up. And they don't want you to know that a lot of them die 
Because why? Because science is in control of the information and we're supposed to bow down to science, right? And so if they say that not a lot of them die, then we're supposed to believe them. And if you don't believe them, that's misinfo, right? The blood, which is blue due to the copper content. So, you know, I'm not making this up. This is the Nakash, which means bronze or copper. Nakosheth means serpent. It's coveted for proteins used to create LAL tests, a process used to screen medical products for bacteria. Synthetic alternatives aren't widely accepted by the healthcare industry and haven't been approved federally, leaving the crabs the only domestic source of this key ingredient. So they harvest these things, some of them in South Carolina. It's a niche industry. And they don't want to depend on foreign countries for a lot of reasons, including national security. So horseshoe crabs, aquatic anthropods shaped like helmets with a long tail, are more akin to scorpions than crabs and older than dinosaurs. Hmm, scorpions. Many people believe that in Revelation, the stinging, there will be stinging scorpions. Says they have scurried along the brackish floors of the coastal waters for hundreds of millions of years. Well, of course, I don't believe the Earth's that old. Their eggs are considered a primary fat source for more than a dozen species of migratory shorebirds. Their value to avoiding infection emerged after scientists researching their immune response injected bacteria into the horseshoe crabs in the 50s. They ultimately developed the LAL test, and the technique has been used since 1970. To keep medical materials and supplies free of bacteria. Wow. So, this is what's going on. The horseshoe crabs. And its relation to CV-19. It was almost prophetic. Here's the next story. Mask mandates. Sticker proof is on the rise. But not everyone is on board. Well, of course not. L.A. County enacted an outdoor mask mandate for large events. And, but, doesn't look like people are buying it anymore. East Coast, same thing. Star-studded outdoor concert on Saturday with Bruce Springsteen and Paul Simon and others in Central Park. Required proof of the sticker to attend, but given the fact it was also outdoors, masks were optional. So, they don't even know how they're going to enforce this, but people are not buying it. And once you go down this road of thinking that science can keep you safe, basically, you're always going to be in fear. Here it says, we're 90% stickered, and I'm still nervous. As the variant shrouds the 2021 college football season. Players walk a fine line. The fear never goes away if you don't have true fearlessness in the name of the Son of God and God himself. That is where true fearlessness comes from because no man can harm you. Because you have everlasting life on the other side. Now somebody sent me this very interesting coffee company called Chimera Coffee. And if you look at their logo... It is a D to the N to the A wrapped around what appears to be a chimera, half serpent, half man. Their motto, we combine coffee with powerful vitamins proven to boost cognitive function. Chimera coffee. And I think this tells the story of what could be really going on. We were already drinking loads of coffee and taking brain vitamins, so why not combine them? Our mission was to provide customers with tools to unlocking human potential. Through the combination of science and nature, we set out to design products that would aid and assist human development. What do you think is behind stuff like this? The X chromosome. You can't make this up, you guys. 
Take care and be safe.